Hi guys, Barbara here and today I'm going to be making this wonderful sweet potato coconut flake bundt cake. Take a look at it. Isn't this gorgeous? I'm going to show you how to make this wonderful sauce too, okay? You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Recently somebody shared a recipe with me on Facebook and it's trending right now and it's a sweet potato coconut flake bread. Well, I took a look at the recipe and honestly, although it looked beautiful from a distance, the bread looked kind of dry to me. So I decided I'm going to do my own spin on this and I'm going to use the base of my Belizean trifle recipe and also somebody was asking me on Facebook where to find my trifle recipe. <laughs> so I'm going to do a spin on my trifle recipe and I'm going to use sweet potato instead and put the coconut flakes in because you already know the trifle has coconut flakes in it originally. I have these things in my hand right here because recently a friend of mine, Lisa, uh, I've known Lisa since I went to my first year of high school in Belize at St. Catherine's Academy. Lisa's mom, Miss Jenny, went to school with my mom and Lisa has been my friend for years and years and years and finally she came to dinner at the Bear Pantry Kitchen. Maybe I'll put a little inset here so you guys can see who Lisa is. But they came bearing gifts. And I know I'm going to embarrass her right now, but I am so grateful for anything that anybody ever gives me at the show because I love to use beautiful things on the show, but I can't afford it all. So the first thing that she got me, let me step out of the way. See the curtain? I'll show you guys better. The curtain that's hanging back there now was actually two dish towels that she brought that was so beautiful that I turned them into towels, okay? Then she brought this. It's a spoon set. And it's not any old spoon set, okay? It has so many different measurements. So it has the quarter teaspoon like you would expect. But, and then it goes up to the tablespoon. But it also has a dash, a pinch, and a smidgen. <laughs> I'll do close up on these for you guys to see, okay? So that just kind of tickled me. It doesn't take much to excite me when it comes to cooking, all right? Then she brought measuring cups and it has the eighth cup. Remember I told you guys in one of my videos that they don't make the eighth cup anymore that I can find and to replace the eighth cup just do two tablespoons, right? So it has the eighth cup and it has the regular that you would think a third, a quarter, a half, one cup. But Lisa didn't stop there, you guys. She got me this and it was Lisa and her mom, okay, Miss Jenny, you did too. So she got, this is a three quarter cup. So you don't have to measure a half plus a quarter to do the three quarter cup. This is a cup. And this is one and three quarter cups. This is two cups. The big one is two cups. And then this one right here is the one and a half cups. And this is what I use to measure up my sugar today. And I actually have a lot of recipes that call for one and a half cups. So I can absolutely just use that. She also got me these glass bowls that you're going to see right now when I show you the ingredients that we're going to need. And I just wanted to really take this time to celebrate my friend Lisa and her mom, Miss Jenny, and her entire family. Thank you for coming to dinner and having fun with us. And thank you so much for giving me all these beautiful gifts to do the show. Okay, I really and truly appreciate it from my heart. So let's go over the ingredients that we're gonna need. All right guys, so take a look. This is three and one thirds cup of all purpose flour and it's sifted, all right? One and a half cups of regular white sugar, one cup of butter softened to room temperature, four eggs, three teaspoons of baking powder, and two teaspoons of lemon extract or lemon essence as we say it in the least. Um, this is one huge sweet potato and this is the Caribbean style sweet potato. I really can't tell you what the difference is but if you don't have that use the one that you have in your region or use yams. Uh, Joe got me like the smallest bag of coconut flakes ever because I sent him to the store to get some of the ingredients today. But you know what? We don't have to like drown the cake with the coconut flakes. I'm the only one that likes the coconut flakes in the cake. Well, Joe and I like it. Uh, Joe and I love it. But anyways, um, you're going to need your hand mixer because we're going to have to cream the butter and the sugar. You're going to need a bundt cake pan. You can also use like a loaf pan to make this, but I want to use it in this today because I think it's going to be pretty. And I'm not going to show you the ingredients right now for the glaze because that's kind of like an afterthought. It's an option that you can do with this cake. But I'll show you towards the end how quickly we can, you know, just kind of make that, all right? So let's get started first of all by peeling and dicing the potatoes and then getting it over to the stove to cook it, all right? Because the potato is really huge, I'm going to cut it in half first. Of course, you know I've washed it already. And then cut it in half again. And then it's just a matter of peeling it and then dicing it up. 
See how much I got out of that one potato? It's a lot, right? It's a huge potato. So let's move over to the stove. I have a pot here. I'm gonna start the fire right now too. And we're just gonna allow this to cook until it's soft. That's why you wanna cut it up into very small pieces because it'll cook faster if it's small pieces, all right? So see you guys in about 30 minutes. This is one of these type of cakes or breads in which I'm gonna have to cream the butter and the sugar first, okay? So let me go ahead and add my sugar and you don't have to do this very long, maybe about five to eight minutes or so with a hand mixer. So remember to scrape down your bowl often. It's time for me to go ahead and add the eggs. And hey, look who can afford brown eggs again right now. You guys know brown eggs are so expensive that sometimes I kind of walk away from them and just get the white ones. Now add the eggs in one at a time and it doesn't matter if a couple gets in at the same time, okay? It'll still be okay. Just incorporate the eggs really well first before we start adding anything else to this batter. So now that this is ready, I'm going to go ahead and work on my dry ingredients. I'm adding the baking powder to the flour and I don't add any salt because the butter has salt already. The potatoes are ready so let me go ahead and dump them into the colander and then from the colander back right into the same pot and I'm just going to use my potato masher to squish them uh, as if I'm making mashed potatoes. So now let me go ahead and add the dry ingredients to the creamed mixture and I want to go slowly and a little bit at a time because this batter is already thick and we're not gonna add any kind of milk to it, okay? The potatoes are gonna take the place of the milk. So just do this back and forth or alternately until it's all incorporated. And then now it's time for me to go ahead and add the coconut flakes. And you can omit this part if you want, but this is a part of the name of the bread, right? Or the cake. So let me go ahead and put the batter in the bundt pan a little bit at a time. It's so thick, all right? It's gonna be a very, very dense cake. So now into a 350 degrees, uh, preheated oven, uh, Fahrenheit preheated oven. It goes for about 70 minutes and look at the bottom. Don't worry about how it's cracked here. This is perfect because uh, you know the cake is so dense. As long as the skewer comes out clean, we're done. Let it rest for about five minutes and then dump it out onto the cooling rack, all right? Now let me go ahead and make my glaze and I'm using orange for the orange juice because somebody used my one lemon that I had to do this glaze with and I want you guys to know that you can totally improvise. One cup of powdered sugar, a couple of tablespoons of the orange juice or lemon juice, whichever one you have. And see it here, it's kind of thick though so I already know I'm gonna have to add a little bit more juice to make it more of a glaze. And Lisa gave me these whisks and I'm gonna use this little baby one. I just love using small little things in my kitchen. Now let me cut a piece so you guys can see what it looks like on the inside. Oh my goodness, take a look. Very dense, but smells very good. Now let me drizzle some glaze on top and then I'm gonna put the glaze on the rest of the cake. Oh my goodness, this is so gorgeous. I promise you guys are gonna love this if you make it, all right? It's very dense. Mm. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. Please check out my other channels, the Product Review channel, my family vlogs, and Joe's channel. You can find all the links in the description box below.